Welcome to a mysterious and deeply moving chapter from the first book of Kings, where chapter 13 unfolds a narrative that at first glance may seem strange and even disturbing. This passage tells the journey of a man of God sent from Judah to Bethel, bearing an urgent message from the Lord to Jeroboam, king of Israel. However, the fate of this prophet takes a tragic turn due to his disobedience to clear divine instructions, leading him to never return to his land or home. For many, this story is an enigma, and some question divine justice in the face of this man's fate. However, the very fact that God chose to include this account in his word suggests that there are valuable lessons he wants us to learn through this dark episode. This event not only underscores God's absolute sovereignty, but also the critical importance of obedience to his word and the severe consequences that disobedience can bring. The saga of this anonymous prophet teaches us that obedience to God is non-negotiable and should not be influenced by external voices, no matter how persuasive or imposing they may be. In this video, we will dive deeply into the scriptures to uncover the truth about the man of God who met his tragic end before a lion, revealing essential insights about faith, obedience and divine sovereignty. Get ready for a revealing exploration that promises to transform the way you see God's Word. This incident occurred during a time of tremendous transformation and uncertainty for the Kingdom of Israel, a period that followed the days of splendor experienced under the reigns of David and Solomon. With the death of King Solomon, an era of fractures and divisions began, culminating in the separation of the once unified Kingdom of Israel. This critical period in Israelite history was marked by the controversial and unwise decisions of Rehoboam, Solomon's son, whose governance led to the kingdom's split. The northern kingdom, which emerged under the leadership of Jeroboam, a skilled and ambitious former official of Solomon, was composed of ten of the twelve Israelite tribes and became known as the Kingdom of Israel. On the other hand, the southern kingdom, formed by the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, maintained the Davidic lineage with Rehoboam on the throne. This bifurcation not only caused significant political instability, but also instigated a prolonged period of spiritual tension, reflected in the frequent conflicts between the two kingdoms. The political division, though divinely authorized as part of God's judgment on Solomon's house's deviations, did not include permission for Jeroboam to divide the people's worship. However, driven by the fear of losing political control and the ambition to consolidate his power, Jeroboam made decisions that would have profound and lasting impacts on his people's spirituality. To ensure the political and religious loyalty of the people of Israel to his new kingdom, Jeroboam established centers of idolatrous worship in Bethel and Dan. These locations, equipped with golden calves that he introduced as objects of worship, directly challenged the worship centered in the Temple of Jerusalem, as prescribed in the Mosaic Law. Additionally, he instituted an alternative, non-Levitical priesthood, marking a clear departure from the practices established by God. These decisions not only alienated the people of Israel from true worship of the Lord, but also represented an explicit rejection of God's sovereignty and his choice of Jerusalem as the site of his special presence among his people. This context of disobedience and religious reform set the stage for the tragic story of the prophet sent from Judah, who, upon entering a kingdom marked by spiritual rebellion, would meet a fatal destiny. This prophet, whose mission was to call the people and the king to obedience, becomes a central figure in a narrative that highlights the seriousness of fidelity to God and the severe consequences that disobedience can bring. At that time, Jeroboam's decision to establish a parallel form of worship in Israel was not only illicit, but also warranted divine intervention. The chosen location for this alternative worship, Bethel, holds deep significance in the scriptures. Its name, meaning House of God, evokes the memory of one of the most remarkable events in biblical history. 
It was in Bethel that Jacob had the heavenly vision of angels ascending and descending a ladder that touched the sky, an encounter that solidified Bethel as a place of divine revelation. Therefore, Jeroboam's choice of Bethel as one of the centers of his idolatrous worship was not only strategic, but also laden with profound irony. He turned a place where the Lord had manifested to the patriarch of the nation into a stage of rebellion and apostasy. It was against this backdrop of disrespect and challenge to divine authority that the man of God was sent to Bethel. His mission was clear to prophesy against the altar of Bethel, condemning the idolatry and rebellion promoted by Jeroboam. But interestingly, the life of this prophet became an emblem of the urgency to heed God's call, a testimony to the importance of faithfulness and holiness. The prophet sent on this mission was an anonymous servant of God, a man whose name is not mentioned in any scripture passage. The identity of this messenger remains a mystery, emphasizing a crucial point. Often, God chooses the humblest and unknown to perform tasks of great importance, demonstrating that true power and authority do not lie in human positions of influence, but in obedience to His Word. This scenario reminds us that, amidst deviations and corruptions of what is sacred, the voice of God can emerge from the most unlikely figures, calling us to return to the path of righteousness and recognize the places in our lives that have been turned into altars of false worship. The story of this anonymous prophet is not just a tale of warning, but also an invitation to reflect on how we live and honor divine commandments in our daily lives. Upon arriving in Bethel, the man of God did not limit himself to simply prophesying against the idolatrous altar that Jeroboam had built. He also demonstrated the truth of his words through a tangible and immediate sign. He predicted that the altar would crack and the ashes upon it would be scattered. This symbolic act transcended mere judgment against idolatrous practices. It was also a striking prophecy about the inevitable spiritual and political decline of Israel under Jeroboam's leadership. While the man of God proclaimed his message against the altar in Bethel, an extraordinary event occurred. Confronted with the bold condemnation of his idolatrous altar, King Jeroboam reacted impulsively. Extending his hand in a gesture that might have been a threat or a command to seize the prophet, Jeroboam experienced an immediate and supernatural divine intervention. The Bible records that the hand Jeroboam stretched out withered, rendering him unable to move it. This miraculous sign served not only as a tangible manifestation of God's power, but also as a serious warning to those who oppose His will and His messengers. This incident not only reaffirmed the authority of the man of God and the authenticity of his message, but also highlighted God's mercy and sovereignty over his servants. It dramatically demonstrated that even in the face of human opposition and challenge, the divine will prevails. Jeroboam's inability to retract his hand symbolized the futility of human efforts against God's supremacy and underscored the need for reverence and obedience to divine instructions. Then, in light of what had happened, Jeroboam, humiliated and frightened by the manifestation of divine power, requested the prophet to pray to the Lord to restore his hand. God, in his infinite mercy, granted that petition. This act is emblematic of God's nature, described in the Bible, who, despite being just, is slow to anger and often extends His mercy even to those who oppose Him. This merciful gesture was not just an act of compassion. It also served as an invitation to repentance. Amid these dramatic events, the message of the man of God to the King of Israel included a remarkable prophecy about an event that would occur three centuries later. He announced the rise of a king named Josiah, who would be born in the lineage of David. This king, unlike Jeroboam and many who followed him, would do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Josiah would be known for destroying idolatrous altars and directly combating the idolatry established by Jeroboam, thus fervently fulfilling God's word. The specificity of this prophecy is truly extraordinary. 
Announcing King Josiah about 300 years before his reign is a testament to God's omniscience and his sovereignty over human history. The fulfillment of this prophecy serves as a powerful testimony to God's unwavering faithfulness to his word and his redemptive plan unfolding through generations. The prophet's mission in Bethel was being accomplished with remarkable success, marked by the proclamation of powerful truths and divine signs. However, a crucial moment came to test his resilience and obedience. God had instructed the prophet with specific orders not to eat bread, drink water, or return to Judah by the same path he used to reach Bethel. Initially, the man of God was firm and determined to adhere to these strict guidelines. When King Jeroboam, impressed or perhaps attempting to entice him, invited him to the palace and offered him gifts, the prophet vehemently refused the royal offer. This rejection was not merely a gesture of disdain, but an act of fidelity to divine instructions. The prohibition against accepting hospitality in Bethel had profound significance, serving as a manifestation of repudiation of the corrupt and idolatrous practices that permeated Israel. This directive was also a protective barrier intended to keep God's servant uncontaminated by harmful influences and communion with those who had abandoned true worship. This divine command highlighted the importance of the sacred separation between holiness and corruption, between the faithful servant and a wayward kingdom. However, despite a promising start and a demonstration of obedience, the narrative takes a tragic turn. The sequence of events that follows is a powerful reminder and a lesson about the perennial fragility of human faithfulness and the severity of disobedience. The fall of the man of God, occurring after an initial period of strict adherence to divine orders, poignantly illustrates how even the most devoted and seemingly steadfast in their faith can fail. Deceptions and temptations arose, and the prophet, perhaps relaxed in his vigilance due to initial success, found himself vulnerable and succumbed. After prophesying against the idolatrous worship established by King Jeroboam, the man of God began his return to Judah. However, this journey was interrupted by an event that would mark a crucial turning point in the narrative, the encounter with an old prophet from Bethel. This episode triggers a significant twist in the story. The biblical text recounts that the old prophet from Bethel, having heard of the powerful actions performed by the man of God, felt compelled by reasons that the scriptures do not fully explain to intervene. Contrary to the divine instructions given to the man of God, the prophet of Bethel decided to bring the man back to his house. Aware of the restrictions imposed on the prophet from Judah, the old prophet of Bethel approached him with an intriguing claim. He had received new instructions through an angel of the Lord, instructions that ordered the man of God to return to Bethel to eat and drink at his house. Moved by the apparent sincerity and the claim of a celestial revelation, the man of God succumbed to the persuasion of the old prophet and accepted his invitation. This critical moment not only demonstrated the vulnerability of the man of God to influence and deceit, but also highlighted a painful flaw in his spiritual journey. The deception, coming from someone who seemed to be a faithful companion in faith, proved to be a harsh test of discernment and faithfulness. By disobeying the Lord's instructions, the prophet from Judah immediately faced the consequences of his act. A divine sentence was pronounced. He would not return to Judah, nor be buried in the tomb of his ancestors. Shortly after receiving this verdict, the prophet from Judah resumed his way home, riding his donkey, but a tragic and extraordinary event interrupted his journey. A lion attacked and killed him, marking an abrupt and dramatic end to his mission and life. The body of the prophet from Judah lay on the road, and curiously, the lion that attacked him did not devour him or his donkey. Instead, the lion stood by the body and the donkey, a detail that underscores the supernatural nature of the judgment imposed on the man. This incident was not a mere coincidence or the unfortunate encounter of a traveler with a wild lion. 
It was a clear and direct manifestation of divine judgment. This act served as a solemn testimony to all who passed by, emphasizing the severity of deviating from the Lord's commandments. When the old prophet from Bethel learned of the tragic fate of the man of God from Judah, he took the initiative to recover the body. The fact that the lion did not devour the body of the man of God was interpreted by the old prophet as a significant sign. He then transported the body back to Bethel and buried it, thus fulfilling the prophecy that the man of God would not be buried with his ancestors. Even having disobeyed the Lord, the old prophet of Bethel recognized that the man had truly spoken in the name of God. Everything that the man of God had prophesied was coming to pass. Recognizing the importance and authenticity of the words of the prophet from Judah, the old prophet instructed his sons that when his time came, they should bury him in the same tomb where the man of God was placed. This request underscores a reverence for the prophet and the power of his prophetic words, ensuring that his memory and spiritual legacy would continue to influence future generations even after his death. The biblical account of this episode concludes leaving many questions unanswered, evoking curiosity and reflection among readers. The text does not specifically clarify why God allowed the prophet from Judah to be deceived, nor why the old prophet from Bethel, who acted with deceit, was not immediately subjected to divine judgment. The Bible, in many of its accounts, presents facts and events without necessarily addressing all the whys that may arise in our minds. This reminds us that God is sovereign and owes no one any explanation, reinforcing the idea that some mysteries are kept beyond the reach of human understanding. Some people may question divine justice in this episode, but it is crucial to consider who are we, with our limited and often corrupted understanding of justice, to judge the actions of the judge of all the earth. It is essential to focus on what is clearly stated in the text and the lessons it offers. For example, the death of the man of God does not invalidate the truth of his message. On the contrary, it reinforces the testimony of the seriousness of obedience to God. This tragic event serves as a powerful reminder and a warning about the consequences of disobedience. Moreover, the choice of the man of God to follow the old prophet and accept his hospitality illustrates a profound truth about human nature, our inherent inclination towards disobedience. Human nature is often compared to a heavy object, tending towards deceit and rebellion against the Lord. The disobedience of the man of God in this context transcends a mere momentary failure, it highlights the reality that the human heart is deceitful and constantly in need of spiritual vigilance. The death of the prophet from Judah, caused by a lion, may initially shock many Bible readers. However, this story leads us to a deep reflection on our own vulnerability to temptations and the essentiality of unconditional obedience to God. The trajectory of this man of God is particularly revealing. Despite his initial faith and obedience, he succumb to temptation, a poignant reminder that regardless of our status or past experiences of faith, we are all susceptible to error. This underscores the need for continuous dependence on the Lord and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to distinguish truth and resist deceit. The Bible is transparent in exposing the mistakes and failures of its heroes, reiterating that everyone, except our Lord Jesus Christ, about whom the scriptures affirm to be sinless, is fallible. This point is eloquently reinforced by the Apostle Paul's recommendation to the believers in Corinth, let the one who thinks he is standing firm be careful that he does not fall. This admonition serves as a call to humility and vigilance in our faith journey. However, even amidst these narratives of failure and downfall, the mercy of God shines intensely. The story of the prophet of Judah shows us that although we may face failures and falls, the purpose and word of God remain firm and will always reach their full fulfillment. 
God in his sovereignty may allow his servants to face severe consequences for disobedience to teach vital lessons, even though we often struggle to understand such disciplines. Nevertheless, God's mercy is also evident in the way the prophet's body was preserved and how he was buried in Bethel, being recognized as a legitimate servant of the Lord. The final prophecy of the man, though uttered under less than ideal circumstances, was fulfilled over Israel, reiterating that the words given by God through his prophets do not fail. Even in God's judgments, there is purpose and divine providence. The truth is that we live in an era where divine judgment is manifested, often mixed with mercy. Thus, even in the face of the consequences of our actions, it is crucial to remember that God is in control and His mercy is present, constantly inviting us to repentance and restoration. Furthermore, we live in a world saturated with conflicting voices and deceptive messages. The story of the prophet of Judah teaches us about the vital importance of deeply knowing God's Word, seeking His guidance in prayer and testing all things in the light of His truth. Faithfulness to God's Word and commitment to His will should be the distinguishing marks of our Christian life, serving as shields against the deceptions that seek to divert us from the path of righteousness. This biblical account brings an urgent and relevant warning to us. Note that the man of God from Judah was deceived by an experienced prophet who falsely claimed to have received a new order from God through an angel. This teaches us the necessity of always being vigilant and prepared to identify deception, even in the most unlikely places. Rarely will someone try to deceive us by claiming to have received a word from Satan. More often, Deceivers will attempt to mislead us by misusing the word and name of God. On this matter, the Apostle Paul issued a powerful warning, telling us that even if an angel from heaven should preach a gospel different from the one we received, that angel should be considered accursed. Paul's exhortation underscores the importance of maintaining a strict adherence to the authentic gospel and rejecting any distortions or falsifications that attempt to pass as divine revelation. The story of this anonymous prophet serves as a powerful call to unconditional and complete obedience to God. This man had successfully fulfilled the divine command until the crucial moment when he disobeyed on his way home. This part of the story highlights a vital lesson. Partial obedience is still considered disobedience in the eyes of the Lord. We are called to follow God completely, trusting His word above all other influences or persuasions. The good news is that we are not alone in this journey. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us into all truth, providing discernment and strength to resist the temptations and deceptions that may arise along our path. It is my desire that this message inspires in each of us greater faithfulness and a renewed commitment to the God who calls us, uses us, and redeems us in His sovereign grace and mercy. May we reflect on the depth of our commitment to the Lord, recognizing that true and complete obedience is the ultimate expression of our faith and devotion. May this story encourage us to live a life that not only seeks God in times of need, but also delights in following his directives at all times, knowing that it is in complete submission that we find our true freedom and purpose.